So my topic is going to be about pioneering a process improvement team. And before I get into the details, um, I wanted to give a quick intro about myself. Uh, Tanya covered most of them, but I wanted to add a few more snippets in there. Um, it's just a cover of the domains that I've been participating in. They, they are quite, I'm quite passionate about all of them, especially around the fintech space as well as the nonprofit space, because there, there's a lot of scope there where we can leverage technology to make things better. Um, and I've also had the good fortune of working in different locations across the world with different companies. Um, and most importantly, I really enjoy this relationship of mentoring and public speaking, mainly because, as I said, I've grown so much as a person, even volunteering with um, Chick Tech, but learning from other people's experiences is so important. And, um, you know, it's important to gain that wisdom so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. And that is, I think, a, a true uh, reflection of my interest in process improvement as well, is not to reinvent the wheel, um, work on things that other have benefited others have benefited from and then use that towards what I'm trying to do um, on my own as well. So um, at, at the end of the presentation, what I'm hoping as your key takeaways would be these two lists. I have broken them down in terms of short term and long term, because regardless of any strategic project that you pick, you always have to have a vision as to what you're trying to accomplish at the end of that specific project and what are you aiming to accomplish that this thing will evolve into in the future. Um, some things are short term, so maybe you won't have any long term goals and that's totally fine, but it's very important to think about those things as you're going through the strategic flow. When it comes specifically to process improvement teams, they can really make a big difference because at the end of the day, the crux of process improvement is really about mindset. I'm sure you have heard about that terminology when it comes to um, agile as well, agile improvements and agile software development process. Um, and essentially all of them say the same thing is that if you have the right kind of mindset to approach certain things, it's going to give you a lot more rewards and benefits and process improvement is no different. There are thousands of toolkits out there, thousands of different ways of doing it, but ultimately it's about how you think about the whole process and how you apply it to your specific scenario. So in this case, in the short term, make sure that, you know, this is approaching it like a domain project. So it's almost like a pilot of a pilot, if you will. Um, you gain a lot of skills in the change management area, trying to build your knowledge and trust. And most importantly, there's a lot of documentation behind it. Anytime you're doing a pilot, it's very important to treat it like a case study so that eventually you're able to come back and kind of look at it as what went well, what didn't go so well, and what is it that can be improved. So you're almost looking at your own pilot as an opportunity for improvement. And in the long term, definitely, as I said, it's, it's about the culture. It's about how people are approaching various aspects. Benefits tracking is huge. Um, people talk about qualitative improvements, but these qualitative improvements are not necessarily possible if you don't have the quantitative aspects uh, aligned to those. So it's very important to use this as your method of tracking benefits. And last but not the least, every company struggles with resourcing, understanding how much work they're going to have, understanding what they're going to be doing. So hopefully through the process improvement methodology and through the um, implementation that you've done in your pilot, you will have a better understanding of what your uh, landscape looks like, what your ecosystem looks like, and therefore you can create an intake process specifically for yourself. And through that, there's a lot of things that align um, in, in a downstream manner in the sense, you know, what are the kinds of things that you want to improve and what are the things that you want to focus on? Um, what are your mission and vision in terms of as, as a company? And does everyone in your company kind of reflect that? So we'll go into a bit more detail about these things. So starting off with the short term versus long term, short term, like I said, is focusing on the highlight um, of needing to change. You need to change something. You know that something is not working well, and therefore you're looking really to change that um, scenario, whether that be through a cultural change, whether that be through process change, whether that be through technology change. This is something that you can investigate as part of your pilot process. On the long term, you're really looking at focusing on continuing benefits. Um, whatever you have obtained from this pilot, you actually want to push that further and grow that even more so that your company is constantly on a growth path. And even if it does dip a little bit, you really know the tools and techniques to bounce back to the growth mentality. And that's really what we're looking at. No company can grow permanently. They are gonna have setbacks, but the ones that separate themselves from the failing companies to successful companies is that they have methodologies and ways to bounce back into that mode of being someone that's performing and even um, you know outperforming themselves from what they were doing 
you know, in the past. So understanding that key distinction is important. So the first thing we're gonna cover through is um, just in the short term, approach it like a DMAIC project. And DMAIC, for those who have gone through Six Sigma training, it stands for the five stages. Now there are different variations of this, but the main ones um, are covered in these. D stands for define, M for measure, A for analyze, I is for improve and C is for control. So you can see that as with any other project management uh, templates, as with agile templates, as, as with gap analysis, Ultimately, you will notice that no matter which toolkit you kind of go to, they're all talking about the same thing. Understand what is it, what what it, what is happening right now. Um, understand where is it that you want to go, and understand what you need to do in the middle. And as part of that, what are you going to be measuring? What are you going to be implementing? So using Demake is, is just an example that I want to place out there coming from a Six Sigma background. You're basically helping your organization see an example of what a Demake project is and how it evolves. And it really gives you an increased sense of visibility for the thought model and the thought process that you want to pass off as a culture. And last but not the least, you're testing it in a safe space. When you roll out things with a mini pilot, you really are able to see the intricacies and interconnections of um, you know, the various steps that you're taking. Often when you read about things in a book, they don't make it as obvious. I mean, things are not as clear because you've not practically implemented something. You've not taken into the um, aspect of human variation. You've not taken into the aspect of uncontrollable factors, environmental factors that might not be present in the book. Um, reading through something is not the same as doing it. So that's basically the crux of piloting something first. Moving on to the next uh, topic is change management, where you are building both your knowledge and the trust that people have in your organization. So the first thing that I would ask is establish the expertise. Now, many people have thoughts around this. Should we get someone who is an industry leader? Should we get a coach? Should we pay for a coach to bring them in? Um, and I would say really assess where your organization is at. If you feel like there is sufficient amount of maturity in your organization that you actually need a coach to bridge that gap between, um, you know, getting into an ex excellent position versus a good position, then make that investment. But if you feel that most of your folks are still at a basic level and training someone and bringing someone up to speed in terms of the knowledge um, would be sufficient for you, then that's fine too. At the end of the day, you need to understand what your organization needs, what kind of domain you are in, and how much of these process improvement tools are really applicable for you as an organization. And again, that means if you want to bring in some outsiders, because sometimes you can get some interesting viewpoints from someone who has not been at your organization for a very long time. So establish that sense of expertise in, in the organization. Buy-in from stakeholders. When you start communicating more and more about these projects that you're working on, you communicate the benefits, you communicate the good aspects of it, and the bad. And when you're communicating the bad, make sure you're communicating the mitigating plan as well. Um, your stakeholders are bound to start trusting you and they'll start buying into the idea as they see some of the benefits that are growing. Um, impress the benefits on them. That's basically what you're trying to do with your stakeholders. And last but not the least, all of these things plan into communication, communication, communication. You cannot tell them it's actually better to over communicate than under uh, because at least now people have an idea of what is it that you're working on and therefore they'll know whether or not to invest in something like this and how they can be an ally for you at other tables that you're taking it to. Because it's not just going to be one stakeholder table that you're presenting it to. You'll have to convince multiple people at different stages. So it's very important that you start building these allies as you're going through. Um, third thing we're looking at is documentation. So this is really key when you're piloting a project. As I said, you're trying to build something like a case study. So building a center of competency, if someone has questions about process improvement, be the first person that they reach out to and that therefore you're increasing your visibility, you're becoming a thought leader in that process. And therefore you will track benefits. And this is where a lot of the things that people are um, thinking about in terms of data analysis can come in. How do you store this data? What are the different metrics that you're gonna be measuring? And without measuring your metrics, you'll never know whether or not you've improved from what things were before um, and what does it look like after you've put in the changes. So make sure that you're constantly tracking the benefits. And last but not the least, evolution. This is something that people have often lost um, track of. And what I mean by evolution is, why is it that you did something? At every stage in the project, you will take a certain decision, you will make a certain um, uh, you know, decision on and bring people together on a certain consensus. And you'll say, 
This is the reason why I'm doing something. But over a period of time, that information is lost if it's not documented anywhere. Um, and the when, when you kind of lose that perspective in the future, when you're trying to improve yourself, you'll never have the perspective as to why this step was put in the first place. And the worst response that someone can give is, I do this because it was always done so. And that's the worst way an organization can stop their progress because they're doing something without having an idea of why they're doing something. Even in product management, this is a big thing. It's like, if you're working on a product, why are you working? Who are you doing it for? What is the pain point? Understanding why you're doing something, it's so important. And that can drive even the passion levels within the team. Because if they understand why exactly they're doing something, they're going to put more of their involvement tenfold, hundredfold, compared to when they don't know why they're doing something. So documentation really helps in this process. And I don't mean intense documentation. Uh, documentation should be um, targeted for the audience that's going to be reviewing this information, and it should be succinct and to the point of what is required. So we're not looking at large, you know, 50 page essays over here, but really even a statement that says we did this because this was these were the benefits and this is the outcome that we desired and these were the people who agreed with it is it's a very simple little acknowledgement document to say that these were the reasons why we took that specific path. Now, moving on to the long term aspect. There are various aspects here in terms of culture. It becomes a repeatable process. As and when your process becomes more and more repeatable, guess what? The next step would be AI and automation. If you know that a specific process can be done without too many variations, then you're getting into that step of, let's get our humans to do more strategic work. And anything that's manual, anything that's boring can now be outsourced into machinery. You can start working on a lot of the hot and upcoming topics in AI and machine learning and things like that. And these would actually be beneficial for you because you've tried and tested them in your pilot process and also in the actual manual process. So if your humans are able to repeat certain processes again and again, slowly you can start looking at automating them. Next thing is mindset. Um, we always say that when we're interviewing for people, technical skills are great, but it's really the passion and the mindset of these people, the culture that you're bringing in, um, the, the surroundings that you are building is more important than just the technical skills themselves. So when your entire team is in this mindset of process improvement, where they're constantly fighting to be a little bit better than what they were yesterday, Think about how much that improvement is going to accumulate when you look at yourself as a whole company. So mindset is very important. Rewards and recognition. Um, often people do things because they're rewarded for something. And if there's no visibility, then they tend to take a backseat and say, OK, I'm not interested in doing this. However, if you start building this culture of improvement, the rewards and recognition are now wired into the people themselves because they realize that hey, I did something great compared to what I did yesterday. And therefore, I'm recognizing that I'm worth it. Imagine how much impact this is going to be in people's self-worth self and how much happier they're going to be at their job, in, improving employee engagement. Last but not the least, unanimous direction towards what they're trying to do. So now you don't, you're not hurting cats anymore. You're not hurting sheep anymore. Everyone kind of knows that this is the direction that we need to go, go to. And this is the mission that we're going to use to get to. And this is the direction that we're going to take. And that in itself creates such a great culture at, at your workplace uh, compared to, you know, people who don't have a sense of direction and they don't know why they're doing certain things. Benefits tracking, we kind of touched on this in the short term, but even in the long term, this is very important. And part of it I've also covered in the previous slide about culture. People really understand the impact that they're creating and it translates into rewards and recognition. And people will feel empowered. They know that they can make a change. If they don't like something at work, they know that there is a process improvement process in place. Um, so people can go to that and start taking some notes, use some templates and start looking at ways of how they can improve it. And also find a way to bring that up to their manager and therefore improvements can be implemented. And the first thing over here that I have listed is standardized comparisons. So by comparison, I don't mean you're putting two people together and you're saying which one is better, but it's really saying if you have multiple departments, say, for example, someone is focusing more on process, someone is focusing more on sales. What are some of the things that will look at people's performance in an equal way so that we bring in equity, we bring in inclusivity, we bring diversity? All these aspects will be better defined if we have something that's standardized across the board and we're able to communicate the why. 
And standardization does not mean we measure everyone the same way, right? The difference between equality and equity. Um, but it's really to acknowledge that there are differences and therefore what is it that needs to be standardized and what are the things that needs to be customized for specific departments and how do we change that? The last thing that I wanted to mention in the long-term benefit is the intake process itself. It really helps you focus your mind on the right initiatives. So if you have your mission and your vision and you know your work culture, you know exactly what needs to come in and you're not gonna be wasting your time on any processes that are not necessarily focused on what your organization is trying to achieve or what your department is trying to achieve. It establish a common understanding. Now, a lot of times when I'm just taking the elevator down to the ground floor or something, someone will stop me, oh, back in the day, pre-COVID days, um, you know, they would just say, you know, I have a project and I want your team to work on it. And suddenly, you know, I may or may not know. Um, and I might say, you know, I need to defer to someone else because I'm not really sure. But when you start establishing a culture whereby standardized, pro standardized processes are available across the line, um, you establish a common understanding and therefore every person in your department can be a spokesperson of the department, which means that you get better allyship, you build better relationships and think about the amount of empowerment that that person has as an employee in the company because now they're completely aware and they feel like they're contributing something valuable and worthwhile in the company. Um, next is business priorities. Obviously, everything that comes through does not need to be worked on. Every battle does not need to be fought. fought. So when you understand these process improvement um, initiatives and you have a standardized way of looking at the intake process, you will pick the specific ones that are aligned with the business priorities and think about the impact to someone in a C-suite when, when you know, all the organization is working towards the same goal. Um, it makes things easier for the C-suite executives. We can focus more on strategy rather than the day-to-day -day, um, you know, things that have to be done hands-on. You can start focusing on bigger things um, and outsource these things to you know, people at, at the ground level so they have the power to make a change. And last but not the least, responsible decision-making. Um, I've worked with multiple vendor groups and um, often what used to happen is the first person who bought coffee for the decision maker ends up getting their vendor into the line. Um, and as we're working in the project, we realize, hey, you know, half the requirements that we asked for never was answered by this vendor simply because no one did a proper review of what needs to come in. And now the decision making with the new process improvement methodologies and the templates and the communication and the work culture that you're implementing, everyone will understand the responsibility of making responsible decisions, um, the accountability behind it and what kind of impact that's going to have on everyone's lives. So this will now, you know, boil down to the different teams and everyone will understand that, hey, there's someone's job on the line here, someone is accountable here, and they need to make sure that they ethically understand that this is the right way to do things. So process improvement will create that kind of structure and framework because at the end of the day, you are counting against all those metrics. You're going through the process that is designed for your team. This doesn't mean you add on red tape um, for the sake of adding red tape, but it's really to make sure that you are following through those steps to ensure that the team is going the right direction. And that was kind of my last point. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and I'm still within time here. Um, I will now stop sharing my presentation um, and see if there are any questions. And if you do have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, have a discussion as well. You're welcome to drop those questions in the chat also in Zoom or in Whova. I think there was a poll that I had posted on Whova as well. Um, are there any preliminary uh, responses in terms yes. of- Yes. Okay. We have a dead tie between mindset and methodology. And this poll is process improvement is a blank. Yeah. Um, we had, uh, no one answered data gathering technique, but the second up is toolkit. But it looks like awesome. mindset and methodology are in the lead so far. Awesome. And I'm glad that the audience kind of realizes that, uh, that it's not a data gathering and it's not something to implement as a red tape. Um, process improvement, in my opinion, has always been a change management technique. 
In fact, in one of the organizations that I worked, we started off as a pilot team specifically for process improvement, but towards the end, they were doing so well in terms of their change management and how they were coming around with techniques to um, you know, convince the C-suite of some of the good projects that they need to pick up. They started becoming the strategy management team. Um, so they kind of pivoted completely from a process improvement team to a strategy management team because they were really good at the change management aspect. And that in itself made such a huge difference in how people viewed that department. And they used to be brought in every time we had a massive um, you know, organization-wide project that we had to implement, or if there was something that was um, a challenging uh, change management situation whereby we actually had to let go of some people because of the economy, or we were reorganizing the, the department in itself. So some people lost their previous roles and they were going into some new roles. Um, but that team was really so good at doing what they were doing that they pivoted into something different. And that has happened as well. And that is why it's so important that you find out whether or not a process improvement team is really what you need for your organization. Um, one size doesn't fit all over here. The main methodology is to really probe in and understand the, the need for having such a department instead of just having one for the sake of having it. That's when you start introducing a lot of red tape process, which ultimately um, defies and almost puts you in a backward position rather than propelling you forward. And I usually give that advice for someone who's looking to implement agile methodology as well. That's another way of improving your process. Um, I'm actually given a talk on how agile methodology improves the innovations in your company. Um, and again, agile is not for everybody really, you know, rely on the information that you're getting from your company. What's the custom need that you need to implement this kind of a, this kind of a company. Um, thank you so much for the feedback. I'm, I'm glad that this was informative. I'm just going to quickly share my screen for the last uh, slide here so that you can still look at the key takeaways. Um, and also I have my contact information there. So if you have any further questions, feel free to contact me through um, LinkedIn or also Whova as well. Thank you so much, Banu. We're so happy to have you back and I'm excited to have you back in the future. I'm sure we'll see you again. <laughs> yes, um, thank thanks you. everyone. Uh, make sure to check out the discussion board so you can continue this. Um, it looks like we still have a dead heat between mindset and methodology. So <laughs> let's, let's fight it out in the discussion boards. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference as well. Lots of uh, interesting topics and I hope to meet some of you over the other talks as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.